Hey everybody, welcome back. I have some questions for you. How would you like to get paid four times as much for the same products and services that you're delivering right now? What if you had a podcast and people actually paid you to appear on it? How would you feel if every day you received four or five requests just to mention a product name on a video that you're already doing and then get paid $5,000 for the 30 seconds of your time that it takes to do that? What if your email box was full of requests to speak at conferences with all expenses paid by the event organizers? Well, that's what having built a personal brand can do for you. Let's talk about some real life examples of this. Public speakers such as Gary Vaynerchuk will conduct a 45 minute talk and get paid $25,000 or more in speaking fees versus many other really great public speakers who might just get $2,500 for a speaking engagement. John Lee Dumas charges people $3,000 to be guests on his podcast because of the influence and authority he's built up as a podcaster and the level of trust his endorsement carries, that is, having people on his podcast as an endorsement. And people pay thousands of dollars to hear Tony Robbins speak in person when they could just watch videos of his speeches online. That's the power of personal branding. But building a personal brand can be a complex thing to accomplish. There are a lot of moving parts and things you have to decide, build, and deliver over time to get to that place that I just described. So in this video, I'm going to break it down for you so you can really get your head around the foundation you need to build and the actions that you need to take to build a successful personal brand. And I'm going to illustrate this process using a proprietary tool that I invented called the personal brand wheel. And I want you to stay with me till the end because I'm going to give you an opportunity to download that tool for free so you can start using it today. Mark Echo, the founder of the Echo clothing brand said, you too are a brand whether you know it or not or whether you like it or not. Now, some of us are developing our personal brands, but many of us sadly are not. But developing a personal brand has really significant benefits. One of the most important benefits is having the ability to charge more for services than others in your field, just because the perceived value of your work is higher than theirs. Personal branding also helps you become known more broadly, get paid for speaking engagements and interview opportunities. You can also make money through sponsorships and endorsements as your influence grows. The increased level of visibility and credibility will make it easier for you to get clients. In fact, many clients will seek you out rather than you having to go find them. So here it is, introducing the personal brand wheel. Years ago, I worked with a career and life coach who took me through a range of exercises and processes in her work with me. One of those tools was something called the life wheel, where you map out aspects of your life in a very visual way. Well, I've based the personal brand wheel on a similar concept, but architected it specifically to use when building a personal brand. By answering a series of question prompts, you can map out your activities, your progress, your successes, and things you may need to work on a little harder. So you can see them visually and also be sure that you're not forgetting to address or develop anything you might need to build your brand. So here's how the tool is set up. The personal brand wheel, or PBW as I call it, is divided into four main quadrants, foundation, omnipresence, engagement, and transformation. In each of these four quadrants, there are three subsections. The concept of the tool is that you map your activities and progress across 12 areas of the personal brand wheel, so you can understand more clearly where you are in your brand building journey. So as you answer the questions I'm going to ask you in this video, I want you to rate your personal brand on a scale of 1 to 5 in each of these 12 areas. You'll be mapping your work on a scale from good, meaning you're making progress and really getting results, to lacking, where you might be overlooking something or you may be underperforming in your efforts. But as your brand grows and matures, the wheel is going to become a cohesive overview of all your ongoing activities. So as I walk you through the personal brand wheel and explain each of these sections, we'll essentially be going through a 12-point checklist of the 12 major things you need to address to build a personal brand. So are you ready to begin? Cool, let's do it. Now the first quadrant is called foundation. The foundation quadrant is where we define the core aspects of your brand positioning. 
This includes what you offer, who you offer it to, why you're better, and why you're different. So the first subsection is called the story section, and this relates to how you've developed your personal and professional story. This relates to your history, but also to your credentials. What brought you to where you are now? Where did your motivation to do what you do come from? What were the catalysts, the changes, the triumphs in your life? And importantly, where are you telling this story? On your website? Now the next subsection is called the purpose section. And this relates to your mission, what you offer, and why you're doing what you do. What sort of product and services do you offer? Who do you offer those products to? Who is your who, your customer avatar? Have you defined who that target person is? Also, why are you better? What are your reasons to believe? Meaning, what are the reasons that people should choose you over one of your competitors? And also, how are you different from your competition? Have you really looked closely at your competition and are you intentionally carving out your own space in the market? Finally, think about what is your mission? Why are you doing this? What is the thing that's really driving you in your soul? What's your passion for doing what you do? Now let's look at the third subsection of the Foundations Quadrant. This is the value section. This relates to the value that you're offering. Have you defined what your value proposition is? What is the problem you are solving for your customers? What is the specific frustration they have that you are addressing? What value do you create? Now this can be free value like the content that you create or it could be paid value, meaning getting paid for the products and services that you're delivering. In this section, you also want to think about how you are creating transformations in people's businesses. Are you really clear on what you want that transformation to be? And can you articulate that really clearly to yourself and to others? Now the second quadrant is called the omnipresence quadrant. And this quadrant is what your brand looks like your website, or possibly your retail store if you have one, and the social platforms that you participate on. Basically, all of the places where you are present. Now the first subsection is called the brand design section. Visual branding is the cornerstone of any strong personal brand. So if you developed all the necessary visual brand design elements that you're going to need in the work that you do, things like logos and fonts and colors and patterns, illustration styles, photography styles, etc. Because you're going to be deploying them consistently across a huge range of assets, both digitally and physically, as you build your brand. Thumbnails, social profiles, banners, social graphics, packaging, etc. You have to make sure that you have a full portfolio of assets to do that work. So do you have that? Now the next subsection of the omnipresence quadrant is the home base section. This section deals with exactly what it says, your business, your home base, which could be your website, or it could be a free or a paid community, it could be an e-commerce store, or even a physical retail store. A key element of your personal brand that you need to address is what I like to call your owned real estate. Because you have to remember that social platforms like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram aren't yours. You need to have some place of your own where you can drive your audience so you can capture their names and email addresses so you can start to communicate with them directly. So how effective is your home base? You want to evaluate things like traffic and conversions and email capture, whether you have automations, whether you're delivering lead magnets. You also want to ask yourself, is my home base really keeping up with what my competition is doing? Now the third subsection of the omnipresence quadrant is the platform section. This section deals with the development of your social media platforms. Have you chosen one key platform to start with? or? Are you already having exposure on a whole broad range of social platforms? Or maybe your reach has gotten too broad to maintain and you really need to kind of consolidate that a little bit and be honest with yourself. You want to catalog what you're doing or not doing. Things like email marketing, posting on social media, articles, podcasts, video, etc. Also, do you have a presence in real life, meaning at conferences or maybe even a retail store? You want to make sure that you're really utilizing all of your platforms to their fullest potential. And if you have platforms that are an option for you to develop that you haven't, you want to make sure that you're cataloging those as growth opportunities as well. Now this brings us to the engagement quadrant, and this is a really important quadrant. It covers the audiences and the communities that you're building and how you're engaging with them in a meaningful way. 
and how your value is being delivered. This includes content as well as actual products and services. Let's talk about the first subsection. It's the conversation section. Personal branding and building authority is a two-way street. You have to engage in dialogue with your audience. So ask yourself, are you going the extra mile to really engage with your followers and your subscribers? Are you engaging in comment sections, in direct messaging, in live streams? Are you developing and really nurturing those relationships? Are you listening to what they're saying and what they're needing? Are you really using that information to make informed decisions about your content and also your products and services? Now the second subsection in the engagement quadrant is the community section. This section is all about the culture you're building within your audience and followers. Are you really building a true community? Do your members engage with each other as well as with you? Have you developed pathways and opportunities for the audience to engage as a group? Are you using polls or live streams or group meetups, either virtual or in real life? Free or paid communities, using things like Facebook or Circle. What is it that you're doing to really build true community? Now the third subsection of the engagement quadrant is the distribution section. This section is about the methods and the processes you're using to distribute your value. And here are some questions I want you to think about. What sort of media are you using or will you use in the future? Are you using writing or video or audio, long form, short form, white papers, infographics, carousels, imagery? Remember, people like to consume content in different ways. Some like to listen, some like to watch, some like to read. So how and where do you deliver your value? What channels or vehicles of distribution are you using? Do you need to add maybe some more, some possible subsets of those channels for members of your audience that might be consuming things in a different way? Also, one thing to think about is, are you growing your audience by leveraging the audiences of others through guest appearances and partnerships? And finally, this brings us to the transformation quadrant. This quadrant deals with the results and the transformations you're creating in your audience and your customers' lives and businesses. It also deals with your personal brand growth and the growth of your meaningful network. Now the first subsection of the transformation quadrant is the growth section. Are you actively building a following? Meaning, is your audience continuing to grow or is it stagnating? How will you scale your personal brand beyond you? Are you using others yet, additional team members or colleagues or partners, to amplify your message and your reach? Are you using automation, possibly, to even streamline your organization? The second subsection of the transformation quadrant is the network section. This section is about the methods you're using to grow your network. You have to remember, a personal brand is not just about you. Power, influence, and authority are amplified in groups. Are you regularly connecting with existing partners and colleagues or are you involved in a peer mastermind? If not, could you start one of your own? Do you actively pursue new connections through conferences and events and summits and meetups or professional organizations? Also, do you participate in forums or groups on social media? How are you growing your network? Now, the third subsection of the transformation quadrant is the social proof section. One of the most powerful ways to build authority and an influential personal brand is to showcase and share the stories of successes that have happened because of the value you've put out into the world with the work that you do. Ask yourself, how are you documenting the transformations of your customers and your community that they're experiencing? Are you collecting testimonials through quotes or video or audio clips? Are you building visual case studies and then are you showcasing those case studies so they can be seen and they can drive more conversions through your website or even on social media? You have to think about social proof as an ongoing activity, creating transformations and then documenting them and sharing them. So after you download the personal brand wheel and as you answer the question prompts in this video, and don't worry, I also listed these question prompts in the PDF tool itself, I want you to rate your personal brand on a scale of one to five in each of these 12 areas. 
You'll be mapping your work on a scale from good, which is in light green, meaning you're making progress and getting results, to lacking, which is in dark blue, where you might be overlooking or underperforming in your efforts. The visual map that's going to be created when you connect all the dots in your ratings will be a clear indicator of where you're doing well and where you might need to do more work. And when you use it in that way, I'm sure you're going to see what a powerful and amazing tool the personal brand wheel is. Now the cool thing about the personal brand wheel is that it can really focus your attention on addressing all the moving parts in developing a personal brand. It can also be used as a regularly revisited ongoing progress evaluation tool for analyzing and measuring as you grow and as you continue to improve your personal brand. So to download the personal brand wheel, just go to philipvandusen.com slash PBW. The letters PBW for personal brand wheel. And as a favor, I'd like to ask you something in the return. I'd really welcome feedback in the comments of the video if you've had a chance to try it out. I'm constantly refining it and would really love your partnership in making it even better. So that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video on the 12 step checklist for building a personal brand, your introduction to the personal brand wheel. If you need help building your own personal brand, be sure to reach out to me at philipvandusen.com and let's see what we can do to get you to the next level. And also, it's a really great time right now to hit that subscribe button and bang that notifications bell so you can get alerted when I post a new video or when I go live. And with that, thanks again for watching. Bye for now.